welcome. This, by the way, is my son in the front right yeah. <laughs> So, just remember everything I'm going to say, I'm saying in front of my 28-year-old son. Oh, he just, he plugged his ears. <laughs> He's a good boy. So, this is my journey to the tell. That's my story tonight. Um, and this story starts with me leaving my husband, uh, my third husband. <laughs> because, as I say with my 71-year-old mom, I can't be the Elizabeth Taylor of Crookston, Minnesota. <laughs> unless, unless I keep getting married. <laughs> Liz, by the way, my daughter-in-law is also here and she has offered graciously to cry at every wedding I have. <laughs> so, I'm newly divorced. And I have a fairly new job and a, a very limited social circle. And I decide I, I'm spending way too much time alone. And I don't mind being alone, but I'm not a loner. So I decide I'm going to start a Just Say Yes campaign that, uh, sorry, Nancy Reagan, just say no. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to say yes. I'm going to try and meet some people. And I'm just going to say yes to everything that anybody asks me to do, no matter if it's something I would ever do in my whole life or not, I'm just gonna say yes. Which is how I find myself with my newly minted friend, Judy, at Chubbs. <laughs> <laughs> Chubbs, for the people who have never been to Chubbs, Chubbs is not a place where the Rubenesque ladies and the Zaftig men get together. <laughs> Although that probably does happen, actually. It's, it's a dive bar that's named after a slang term, an eighth grade slang term <laughs> for an erection. <laughs> so I'm there, I'm, I'm arriving at 11 p.m. on a Friday night because I, I work an evening shift. And I get there, Judy's already there. I don't know what I was expecting, but not what happened next, which is what I'm gonna tell you about. It's my first foray into my social life, my new, Special social life. <laughs> so I arrive and everybody's drunk. They're drunk. They're so drunk they should have their names written on their forearms with their addresses <laughs> and their their cab money pinned to their lapels. <laughs> They're like wicked, wicked drunk, wicked drunk. And my seat is empty, waiting for me. And it has two drinks in front of it already. <laughs> like that's, I just need to catch up quick. <laughs> and uh, there's no catching up, trust me, there's no catching up. Um, so me, I sit down and let me introduce you to the players. I sit down, let's call me ignorant. <laughs> I don't know what I'm thinking is gonna happen, but I totally was not expecting everything that everybody who hears the words dive bar is totally expecting. Next to me is Judy, and Judy is party girl. Let's call her party girl. And then next to her is John, and John is quoting the Bible when I arrive. <laughs> and he's telling the story of Joseph, if you're familiar, and the dream coat. <laughs> And he's at the seven years of drought. <laughs> and he reminds everybody several times he has a point. So we should, we should keep listening and wait. So John is uh, crazy. He's got crazy eyes. Just like, um, I'm going to try to explain it, but I, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's not crazy like, uh, let's get really drunk and drive too fast and wake up with weird tattoos. It's not that kind of guy. It's, it's not the... One time when I was in the bus stop here in Fargo, there was a guy saying, uh, pacing back and forth, saying, washing machine, washing machine. <laughs> it's not like that kind of crazy either. It's, he's got crazy eyes like um, Jonestown. <laughs> <laughs> or... <laughs> You know, baby Doc Duvalier <laughs> hiding out, like he's perpetrated war crimes in other parts of the country, in other parts of the world, and he's hiding out in Fargo, North Dakota, because who's going to look for him here? <laughs> At my table, <laughs> quoting the Bible. 
Next to him is Lupi. And Lupi is of Mexican heritage, and I lived in California for 15 years, which is a very uh, multicultural conglomeration of all the Latin American countries among everybody else in the whole world. And so immediately, when he says Lupi, I hear Lupe. <laughs> which I think is awesome, because it's the shortened form of Guadalupe, which is a unisex Spanish name, and I like words, so I happen to know that Guadalupe is thought to be an Arabic-Spanish hybrid, Arabic wadi for river, and Lupe wolf, uh, for Spanish for wolf, so it's river wolf, so that's totally cool, and it's, it's associated with the Virgin Mary which kind of ties into the theme of the table. <laughs> I'm thinking, awesome. So I say, Lupe. And he immediately corrects me and says, no, Lupe. As in, not right in the head. As in, so laughable as to be absurd. <laughs> um, so that's Lupe. Next to me is a guy that answers a question that I never asked in my whole life until that moment is, what if my dad was not an intellectual, well-spoken <laughs> teacher? What if he had grown up a redneck, meth addict, alcoholic? <laughs> he would have been that guy right next to me. <laughs> so, ignorant, takes a drink. <laughs> and I'm just floored, like I can't quite, you know, find my footing just sitting there. And, and then John, John and Loopy start kind of arguing with each other about who's going to buy me a drink. And Randy, oh I forgot, my dad's parallel universe dad guy is named Randy. I can't change the names to protect the innocent here. <laughs> Randy is there. And Randy gets up and goes get a drink, because he's, he's been around the block again, again, again. He knows how this works. Chivalry's not dead, even among the alcoholics. He's, he's going to get me a drink right now while those two idiots fight over who's going to get me a drink. <laughs> and when he comes back and he puts the drink down in front of me, he sits down and he puts his hand on my thigh. And... He leans in right here with his cigarette smoke breath, his bad meth teeth. His whiskey. And he says, I'll protect you. And that's when I realized that everybody at the table wants to sleep with me. <laughs> Not because I'm very special, although my mom tells me I am. <laughs> she tells me I'm special, she loves me very much. No, but just because I brought my vagina to the vagina world. <laughs> and it's game on. Game on. And right now, Randy's in the lead because he's got his hand on my thigh. <laughs> and he's already bought me a drink, so Loopy, who is not completely Loopy in the head, gets up right away to get me a drink because he's not going to be outdone by, by the way, I've got three drinks in front of me now. <laughs> so I'm catching on. I'm not quite as ignorant. I take Randy's hand. What I want to say, what I want to say and I didn't say, was I want to say, listen, Mr. Burns. <laughs> I'm, I'm 50 and you're my dad's age and my dad has passed away. So people in his demographic aren't really known for kicking ass. And what do you think is going to happen anyway? If these two guys across the table are in their 30s first, so if they did really want to, you know, break his hip, they certainly could. <laughs> But, like, what's going to happen? And, 
and I'm thinking, these guys are so drunk that I could probably beat them up with three stooges maneuvers. <laughs> and, and if I'm wrong, I bite. I will, I will bite war crimes guy, and I will send his DNA to the Hague. I'm, not, I'm pretty sure I'm right on that guy. And so, so I, t so I don't say anything because my mom raised me to be like super polite, extra special polite, on the outside. <laughs> so I take his hand off my thigh and I put it on his thigh where it belongs. And then he sees Loopy come back with the drink. And so Loopy <laughs> puts a drink down in front of me, and Randy is not to be outdone by someone buying me another drink, so he puts his hand on my thigh again. <laughs> now, let me tell you something about myself. I am a stoic Norwegian from a small town, a Lutheran, my grandparents, my great-grandparents, they came over from Norway with nothing but the clothes on their back and a disdain for being touched by strangers. <laughs> it's up to me. It's up to me to keep the dream alive. <laughs> And so I've given him like one, one super polite, like, hey, no. I mean, there's three, pe there's three people who can put their hand on my thigh. One of them is me. I can be as fresh as I want with myself. <laughs> one of them is someone who's having sex with me, which right now is me. <laughs> or a wise elderly person who has sage advice for me, preferably after a church sermon <laughs> about Leviticus. <laughs> or divorce. <laughs> so those people aren't there, <laughs> is what I'm saying. So I start a campaign, in addition to the Just Say Yes campaign, I start a smaller campaign right there, which is the I want to make this guy hate me campaign. <laughs> because the other guys, they're not, it's not a problem, they can't, they're too far away from me. <laughs> and Judy's made it clear that she will also sleep with me but, but she'll just wait and see what happens. So she'll just wait. We don't have to sleep together that night. So, so Randy, I take his hand off my thigh and I put it back on his thigh again and I say, I like rap. Because I think that's, a, that's like my non sequitur opening volley I want you to hate me, which is hilarious. Loopy thinks that's the funniest thing he's ever heard in his whole life. And then he starts watching the game because he like somehow recognizes it. He's probably seen it played on him many times. <laughs> he recognizes the, the verbiage. <laughs> so that's disconcerting. I like rap. That's very disconcerting. Keeps his hand on his own thigh. And um, he says he likes country. And then I say, I have a women's studies minor. <laughs> and he says, what does that mean? <laughs> and I said, and Loopy, by the way, is laughing so hard he's crying. <laughs> He knows where it's going now. He goes, what does that mean? And I say, it means I don't shave my armpits, for one. <laughs> bunch of things. It means a bunch of things. <laughs> so, so <laughs> spoiler alert, I go home alone. <laughs> but I decide I'm not going to give up on this campaign. I'm going to keep up. Boy, I'm questioning my life choices. But, you know, so many other people there were doing that too. I feel like I was fitting right in. But, so I say yes to a whole bunch of dubious things. Let me just list out. I'm not going to tell you any more story. I'm just going to randomly throw out things that I said yes to. I said yes to uh, Duffy's. I, I said yes to the Moorhead Center Mall. 
I said yes to coffee with the woman who moved in with my ex right after I left. <laughs> after that, I said yes again to Chubbs. <laughs> and then I said yes to a 21-year-old NDSU student who wanted to get to know me better. <laughs> via safe sex. <laughs> and then I said yes to a bunch of things. And then I said yes to a strip club. Yeah. And observing, not, not dancing. <laughs> but I also said yes to a bunch of great things. I said yes to an unplug night where everybody turned off their phones and they played musical instruments and socialized and read poetry. And I said yes to Atomic Coffee. And I said yes to Nicole's. And I said yes to a nature walk. And I said yes to babysitting wonderful, delightful children. And I said yes. <laughs> to the tell. Yeah. Yes, that's how I feel about it too. So I went from the most primal base instinct of people wanting to fuck each other <laughs> to people wanting to talk about it. 